All right, family, it's the general. I'm black at y'all ass again with this real talk. Today, we're going to be dealing, dealing with a very, very powerful topic. We're going to be dealing with the Sufi Nazarites and woolly-headed Christ figures of the ancient world. You, you know, a lot of people may not be familiar with the Sufi orders, you know, that exist in Islam today, that existed thousands of years before Islam in its African tradition. Also dealing with the Nazarite, the, uh, what we call the African locks, you know, the priests and mystics that wore the African locks in the ancient world. Christ figures all over from Africa to Asia who had the divine woolly crown on their head. So we're going to be dealing with this today and see the power in who we are. You see, we're doing a lot of reading, but we just not understand. Motherfucker can read a ton of books and still not understand. And so today, you know, we're going to break through that. We're going to break down a lot of the occult and hidden meaning of a lot of this material. We're speaking, but the words are mute because we don't know the true definition of these words. So today we, we will be unlocking the mystery of the ancient world. We will be unlocking the power of the crown, the woolly crowns that sit upon our heads. I want y'all to prepare yourself to be exposed to earth-shaking information now. Be, prepare yourself. This is academic artillery for the African scholar. You see, uh, I want you to get on over there to kingseti.com online marketplace, official general Sairasu Seti DVD lectures, T-shirts and hoodies, African and comedic jewelry, holistic tonics, remedies, and much, much more. You also get over to Seti University of Ancient and Modern African Wisdom and Knowledge, the complete General Sarah Soon Seti website, GeneralSeti.com. Ring the alarm, GeneralSeti.com. Okay, hundreds of lectures and videos, General Seti street battles, debates, uh, all world religions, black power politics, and economics. Seti with the master te teachers, video and radio interviews. Uh, too raw for YouTube, banned videos, highlights from over 50 cities, and much, much more. Okay? I want you to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. Give all my videos a thumbs up. Like it because you love it. You know, uh, join my General Seti YouTube page, Sarah Soon Seti YouTube page, King Seti YouTube page, because you know Seti Live is lit. I want you to support me on my Patreon, General Sara Soon Seti. General Sara Soon Seti Patreon with over 100 exclusive live stream videos that you ain't going to see nowhere else but on my Patreon. So you need to get on over there right now if you know like I know. You see? And so family is about to go down. It's about to go down. Prepare yourself. You understand? Let all ignorance run and hide. The gods and goddesses are in the house. African gods and goddesses are in the house. Today we're going to be dealing with the Sufi Nazarite and woolly haired Christ figures of the ancient world. Now, for many people, the Sufi, the Nazarite, you know, is, is a mysticism. You know, in other forms of mysticism, you might know Kabbalah, you might know the Shriners and all type of Gnosticism. Even voodoo, you see, it's a voodoo. You got woolly, woolly headed mystics. So you know what I'm saying. You got woolly headed mystics and and voodoo, and that's another one. And so many of these African traditions, you know, outside of the little dogma, you understand what I'm saying? That they might have, and you know, the the ritualism and culture is the same. You see what I'm saying? Is this basically the same? And so, you know, the ancient African Sufi Nazarite, you know, when you're dealing with the, uh, the coily hair and you're dealing with, you're talking about the crown of God. And we're going to show you that many of the gods of the ancient wor world wore this crown and it was divine to have woolly hair. Also, that it was the abode of God. When you became a Nazarite, the, your hair was the 
consecration uh, of, of to God. And so God, your hair became the abode of God. You see what I'm saying? And so when you're talking about the crown chakra and you're looking at that woolly hair Buddha, which is African, which is one of the woolly hair Christ figures of the ancient world, you see the sun is emanating through the crown. You see what I'm saying? It's an antenna. It's also the abode of the, of, of the solar energy. You understand? Along with the pioneer, which is the seat, and your hair being the crown, you see? And so we understand that the uh, the true crown was taken from the halo. When you look at a crown today on many kings, it's, no, it's nothing but a manifestation of the halo, which is a manifestation of the sun. And so we, today we're going to be talking about the original Sufi, the man of wool, the original Nazarite, the man of wool, and all other Christ fig, African mystic Christ figures of the ancient world. Now, in this, in 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 uh, the Nazarite, in the uh, Sufism, even in the mystery schools of ancient Egypt, you or the Nile Valley, you know, you know, the goal was to become deity. The goal was to become godlike. You know, in many instances, to even have a a a, a, a one on one experience with with the Creator. And so a lot of people, you know, in Buddhism, they say nirvana. You understand what I'm saying? Achieving nirvana. You know, the, uh, in, the, in the mystery schools of ancient Egypt, is to become godlike. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, in, in, in the Baptist church is, God damn it, catching the Holy Ghost. You become, you're having a one-on-one -on -one experience with God. You see, now in Daniel 7, 9, it says, I, you know, I beheld to the thrones were cast down, down in the ancient of days, did sit. So this wasn't even Jesus. This was God the Father, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like the pure wool. Then say, God damn it, have, have wool and have this, that, and this. It's a pure wool. So we're talking about God the Father, the ancient of days. You understand? So you already know who you're talking about. You see? So what does it mean to be pure? It says not mixed or unadulterated with any other substance or material. Not mixed. Not mixed or unadulterated with any other su substance or material. So when it says pure wool, it means uh, pure African, pure, pure Kushak. It also means free of any contamination. See, so they understood what Daniel 7, 9 meant. And so when it came to Revelations, what they tried to do, uh, Revelations 1, 14, where it said his head and his hair were, were white like wool. See, right there, they tried to take the emphasis off of the texture and apply it to the color to fool you, not knowing that you got black sheep also. You see what I'm saying? You got the black sheep also. Now, when we're talking about the Christ figure, we got to also understand, you know, when it means to be Christ. Because you got to have, you know, you got to be black. You got to be melanated. You got to have the source of what they call the liquid of God. The, you know, the liquid of God. He anointed my head with oil. You understand what I'm saying? So when you, when you talk about the Greek, the freak, which they don't know too much about nothing, no way. It says Christ from the Greek means anointed one, to a, meaning to anoint. Anoint with what? What do you anoint with? And so, you know, it, 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 to be anointed, you have to go also into this, the Sanskrit, what Krishna, which is nothing more than Christ, which is the black woolly-headed deity over there that they didn't did just like the black Christ of, uh, you know, uh, 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 Osiris, you see what I'm saying? And, and, and then, you know, and then uh, turned him into some uh, wicked manifestation of today that looked more uh, Cro-Magnum Neanderthal. In, 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 in Sanskrit, Krishna means black. So when it says to anoint, anoint with what? And you understand that Krishna means black, it means to anoint with melanin. And so the, the oil that they speaking about is melanin. You understand? So Christ means the anointed one with melanin. 
He anointed my head with oil. And see, a lot of people don't understand, even in the uh, New Testament, you know, uh, the disciples was listening to Jesus speak, and he was speaking in parables, and he was, he was talking in a way that even the damn disciples couldn't even understand what he was saying. So when they got him alone, they say, man, what the hell was you talking about? And he said, well, I was speaking in parable. He said, God damn it, it ain't meant for everybody to know, you know, these things. It's only meant for you. And they were confused until the one that they called Jesus, you know, uh, you know, gave them the source of the parables, the true meaning of the parable. But God damn it. So if he's speaking in parable, you know, you can't read the Bible thinking that you're going to read some surface information. It's a lot of that information that is hidden from the common mind. You see what I'm saying? And it's going to take a great one, such as the general that can break that information down to you. So Christ means the anointed black Christ, you know, anointed with melanin and also black consciousness, not just no damn melanin, but that immortal consciousness of the cosmos. You see what I'm saying? As you look out in that sky, you see that black melanin, that cosmic melanin. Now it also, we speaking in, I keep losing this, uh, this chapter, or matter of fact, the book. I believe this was in uh this was in Matthew. I don't know which one it was, but we'll get it. We'll get it. You can find it. All you have to look, do is look it up. Where he's dealing with separating the the sheep from the goat. See, now you're dealing with totem, totem, zoomorphic totems, where the sheep and the goat is symbolic of people. Okay? And you got to understand that. And it says, uh, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with them, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a, sh a shepherd divided his, sh his sheep from the goats. His sheep from the goats. He shall keep the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, be blessed in my father, inherit the kingdom, prepared for you from the prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For as I hungered and ye gave me meat, I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Okay? And so we talking about the we talking about the sheep. They fed, they fed crop. You understand what I'm saying? They gave him meat. They gave, but then shall he say unto them on the left hand, which is the goat, depart from me, ye cursed, into an everlasting fire, prepared for the devils and angels. For I was hunger, hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in naked, and ye clothed me not sick and in prison, and ye visit me not. So when you talk, when we talk about, you know, the, the sheep, you're talking about the woolly head, the coily head, which is also serpentine and orange. You see what I'm saying? Or boys, you're talking about the spiral of the serpent, which emanates spirit. You see what I'm saying? And we see that these Nazarites, which we, a lot of people think of a Bob Marley when they see a dread. I don't even know why they call it dreadlocks. This is African locks. There's not, nothing to dread, you know, and that's why they call it dreadlocks, not African locks. It's mystic, uh, spiritual, sacred African locks. You understand that depict the ancient Sufis and the ancient Nazarites and the ancient African mystic who understood that. And you see many of the African traditions with the hair today, you see, and you see right here, wigs in ancient Egypt proved that the Egyptians had coily and spirally hair. You know, and so all throughout the Nile Valley, you see these Nazarites, you see these in what we call Sufi mystics. Long before Islam, ain't no goddamn Islam got nothing to do with woolly-headed Christ figure mysticism, African mysticism of the ancient world. Even when you look at uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, war crown, you know, of ancient Egypt. You see the spiral inside the crown, symbolic of the hair. 
You understand? It's in by number six, five. All the days of the vow of his self. We're talking about the Nazarite. And then you talk about Jesus of Nazarene. You know what I'm saying? Which is nothing. You know, these are all, you know, a co-understanding of Osiris. That's far older than anything that you can ever read in the Bible. Okay, so don't get it twisted. We just using these modern manifestations to, to transport deeper, to go through the portal with symbolic of the serpent, the dragon, to teleport through time. See, all the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which the, uh, he separated himself from the Lord, which is serpentine, O-R, or a boar, it's Gorgon. You see the O-R is serpentine. So when you talk about the Lord, when you talk about the serpents of ancient Egypt, you see the crown on their head to symbol, uh, symbolize rulership and sovereignty. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. Okay? Throughout the term of his vow as a Nazarite, no razor shall touch his head. He shall remain consecrated until the completion of his term as Nazarite of the Lord. Okay, all the days, number six, eight, all the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. So you got to understand that. You see what I'm saying? You That's why you got to understand the, the divinity of your hair. Because the, consecra because the consecration of his God is upon his head. You see, it's upon his head because the, and that's your hair. All the days uh, uh, of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. Okay, and so we went through that. And so when we go to Psalms, and I, I, I rarely, I be, I didn't put the. Uh, you can go in there and look it up your damn self. I think it's Psalm twenty-five. Thou anointest my head with oil. Now, I put something up there. We know that this is just some oil that use melanin. The, the oil, you know, is melanin. When you talk about it, you know, he anointed my, my head with oil. That's the Christ figure. That's the black Christ figure. And the oil is melanin. So we're talking about our hair, which is our crown. We're talking about the pineal, which is the seat of the Almighty. Now, we're going to be dealing with some Sufism. In synagogue, right there, you're looking at the Grand Mosque of Tuba. You understand which is the Mecca of, of West Africa. This is where the brothers and sisters go to their pilgrimage. They don't go to Mecca a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't either. God damn it, dealing with the racism of the Arabs over there. And plus, God damn it, you you in, in Africa is the Holy Land. The hell, you gonna go to another man land talking about holy? You in the Holy Land when you in Africa? So this should be, you know, and we got to go all the way a lot of times. You know, we still dealing with, you know, partially, you know what I'm saying, foreign entities. And we got to go all the way. But, you know, in dealing with the Su Sufism in Africa, we see a lot of the African culture still connected with these brothers and sisters. And so you see Tuba and Senegal, you understand what is, what, and we have to just take the time to do some research. Now, with the African locks, we're going to deal with uh, one Sufi group, which we call, which is a part of what they call the Morides. You know what I'm saying? Which is a form of uh, Sufism. I don't necessarily agree with the pale Arab that, you know, that they, you know, got some connection to. But, you know, we talking about a, 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 a I would say, a denomination of the Morides which is in uh, Sydney. Now, the Morides is all over West Africa, but we're talking about denominations of that Sufi order, which we call Bay Falls, which is in Senegal. And you see right there, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about the dark melanin. We're talking about the woolly head mystics, and they are mystics. When you're dealing with Sufism, you're dealing with mysticism, and we're going to break it down, which they don't do in Islam, and Sufism is uh, shunned and and, and call, you know, heretic in Islam because they still hold on to many of their Af African traditions, such as wearing talisman, which you see over their neck. That ain't, you know, ain't no damn, you know, you go to, you know, over there with them, them pale Arabs, they're going to look down on this. They ain't going to see no Muslim right there. 
You know what I'm saying? But, you know, these are the, the Sufi order. And, it, you know, the Sufism is the African tradition. You understand? It, this is the African tradition. And you see they wear they locks. You see what I'm saying? So this is really what it means. They're going to tell you in, they gonna, when, they, when you talk about Sufism, they're going to talk about some coats and shit. Like they did some Tibetan monks came from the east wearing lamb coats and shit. Man, that ain't got nothing to do with a goddamn thing. They always lying. They dealing with these woolly head African mystics. That's what they talking about when they talking about the wool. Because it go back into ancient times. You understand? You can't go good to Tibet. Tibet is some yesterday, you know, some Johnny come lately. You know what I'm saying? This ain't, ain't nothing ancient about Tibet when you're comparing it to Africa. It's yesterday. And so you see these brothers that, you know, you couldn't look at them and, see, and say that they was Muslim. You understand what I'm saying? Because of the African tradition that they hold on to, and which is very beautiful. Now, in that Sufism, they also have shrines. And, you know, and a shrine is a, a, it could be a, a building. It could be a... It could be a tree. It could be um, where uh, a, a, a holy in the, uh, person, a saint, ha has been attributed to that building. And that the uh, domestics and the pilgrimages are taken to that building so that they could pray and, and uh, uh, you know, venerate that saint, you know, and pray for uh, intercession, just like they and the Catholics do with Mary. To intercede on in your behalf on the people, you know what I'm saying for the people. You see, and so you know there are shrines which you it, which is not a you know typically a lot which they say, but the guy you know and they say that is not accepted in Islam, and I, they got a goddamn shrine to every little fake prophet that they want to venerate, uh, Ali and Umar and. All the rest of them, that's not looked at as no shrine. You know, so when a Muslim go to Umar's, a mosque or his burial, which ain't no Umar in there, then that's not looked at as a shrine. So, you know, the only thing they mad about is because these brothers and sisters got an African saint. And, you know, they don't like that. You know, you're supposed to be venerating that pale air. And so you see it all throughout you know, the United States and many European uh, nations where they trying to ban African hairdo because they know the power in that. You know, where you can't wear, these is our traditional, what the hell you, we look like, you know, you know, and we understand the origin of that. You understand what I'm saying? We understand the power of that. That's why it continues on for thousands and thousands of years unabated. Another black student suspended for his African life, Okay. And so they understand, so that's the negativity that they have on that because they understand that the serpents of the titan, uh, Medusa, which was, you know, a, you know, a beautiful woman, but was cursed hideous. You see what I'm saying? Was cursed hideous. The same serpents on the head of Medusa is the same serpents behind the head of Buddha. And then also Jesus was, uh, uh, you know, compared to the brazen serpent, the healing serpent, what you call the caduceus. You see what I'm saying? So he was also compared uh, to the serpent. And so we see again that, you know, there is a story that yet is yet to be told. So when you talk about the sheep with the woolly, that's the woolly hair. You see, when you talk about the goat, then you're talking about the straight hair. That's what you're talking about. So when you go to ancient Egypt, you're talking about the shrines of ancient Egypt. You're talking about Abydos, Philae, uh, Napata, which is down in Sudan, Saqqara, Karnat, Aksum in Ethiopia. Even St. Mary's in Ethiopia is a shrine. That pilgrims uh, uh, make pilgrims, uh, pilgrimages from all over Africa, all over the world. You know, to these areas. And so here at Saqqara, you see that this is a a, 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 a shrine to Zosia and many other uh, uh, African uh, uh, holy men and women in that whole complex, Saqqara complex. But this particular uh, a pyramid and the uh, pyramid complex uh, possessed uh, uh, shrines to Zosia. And I myself went there. 
you know, and made my pilgrimage, you understand, as an African mystic. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, we got to understand you don't just, you can say Sufism, you can say Nazarite, or you could just say African. You know, you ain't got to, you know, you know, that it all, you know, has some similarities in African tradition. So this is Zosia who ruled around 2700 BC, and there at that, in that uh, a Saqqara temple complex, you see that there's a Sardab. If you look through, you'll see right there the, the statue of Zosia. So this, this is a holy area where you come and venerate the great Pharaoh who has now become Osiris in his, in, in his transformation. You see what I'm saying? So this is a shrine. So even at Philae, which is a shrine to Isis. Then you go to Abydos, which is a shrine to Osiris. You see, and right there behind uh, that uh, temple, you'll see that there's the Osirian, and this is where Osiris was said to be buried. You see what I'm saying? So this is a, a shrine, and you see the ark that will carry uh, an image of, of Osiris, just like they try to carry Mary through the streets today in an ark. So this is uh, the Ark of Osiris, and you see right here, these are shrines. You will see a deity or a mystic or a saint or African saint that, that is being venerated, you see, and so they would make a shrine. So many of what you see even in Vudan today and many other African traditions where they make shrines were all, was being, you know, this is an ancient African tradition, and they would also bring food. To these shrines, you know, which you again you see still being carried on today, and so you see the power in the African shrine through what they call the Hebraic tradition of, of the Ark of Covenant, which is a shrine, you know, but it, it was taken from the ancient Egyptian shrine, and so again you see Bay Falls and you see their patron saint whom they follow. I forget the brother's name. But, you know, that's not, you know, and so, you know, it's okay, uh, you know, that they venerate their own people. It's, it's most definitely an a honor to see African people venerate their own. You see what I'm saying? All they had to do is cut the white Arab all the way loop, and they all, they gone back to the ancestral basis and foundation. And so what you see, even in what they don't do, in, 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 in uh, the Arab Islam, that they make uh, 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 sacred paintings all over the, you know, they, the city, you know, of their patron saints. They got more than one patron, you know, one saint, you know, and then, so they, this is not a lot, even though, they, you know, they do do it in the Arab Islam. They just mad because it's black people. Just let's be clear about that. And so you see the sacred graffiti. You see what I'm saying of their saints, which is very beautiful to see. That I don't see no white air up there, and it's very powerful. And so you see the graffiti, you know, which is sacred graffiti, gr sacred art. You see, and here's another shrine where they come and venerate. And this is two uh, tubular, and you see the brother bound down to his, his the young queen there, and that that's powerful because you won't see that in air Islam, but you know. It, it, it was powerful for me to powerful for me to learn that even at Timbuktu that they had saints and in Timbuktu is called the city with 333 saints and so you see some Mali uh, Mali extremists attacked the Sufi shrines in Timbuktu I believe in uh, 2112 you see they attacked. You know, and they, even the pyramid there, I believe, is a shrine to one of those African saints of Timbuktu. And you can see where they, they obviously, they damaged it. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Only in my, my new research that I, I found out that these extremists attacked that pyramid because you can see them on the side, obviously, uh, fixing it. You know, and you see here also... You know, they didn't went in there and, and destroyed it. Because you can see them putting all type of new mud up on the, you know, the pyramidal, uh, pyramid uh, tombs and, and shrines. These are shrines. You see one shrine here 
where they knocked a hole in it. So there's a lot of uh, uh, shrines in Timbuktu, you know. And so I didn't. So his Sufism is very powerful in Africa, and I like the fact that they venerate their own. You see, and so you see, there's a chanting that go on in Sufism, as in Nazarite and all other African traditions, such as Voodoo. And so it could get loud now, just like in the in the Baptist Baptist Church, it could get loud. That's a part of the Africanism that they don't, they don't want to acknowledge. They got all that other craziness on top of it that they can't see that is African. And so these brothers and sisters can get loud, you know, and in chat, and we do it too. Even when we teaching and preaching and all that, we can get loud. And so, you know, you know, the white Arab ain't going to like that, even though they do do a lot of that. They, they just don't like the fact that they hear them African voices, which is way more powerful. It's deep. Or it, the waters is deep. You see what I'm saying? The soul is deep. So when you hear all these brothers and sisters chanting and getting into their spirit, shit, it can shake mountains. And so they're scared of that. Also in the uh, Sufism and the drumming, is, uh, in the Nazarite is the drumming. And you right there, you see a drum from ancient Egypt. You see right there, you see the sister to the right with the drum, you know, slapping that drum. And you see here to the left, you see the Sufi. He's still, he's an African Sufi. This is a Sudanese Sufi. He's slapping the same drum that been slapped since ancient time. You see God, God is best, slapping the drum, the hell, handheld drum. You see the brothers here beating on the drum. So you already know they rocking. You know, what you ain't going to hear. I didn't hear white, white Arabs say, you know, the music is, you know, you ain't supposed to do that. Well, God damn it, well, take this shit on over there with you. Because we're we, we going to play our music. Because, you know, in our spirit, we, you know, the, the universe is music and harmony. You see, that's why in me melody, you hear melanin. You see, and so because they don't possess that, they, 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 they uh, defame and they make de derogatory those things which are sacred to African people. Just like you see the brothers, they be our sisters out there dancing, which, you know, they don't like that. You know what I'm saying? They don't like that, but we've been doing it a very long time, and it's in our soul to do that. This is a Sufi, and you see him there with the leopard skin. You see him right there with, you know, with the, uh, the nose ring. You see him with the locks. They're not going to like that. In Islam. So you see, that goes back even to the Nile Valley, even before the Nile Valley. You see, the African uh, kings and royalty all over Africa, queens also wear the leopard skin. You see, and another thing that you see with the Sufis and what you see with African mysticism, whether it's Budan, whether it's the Nazarite, it's talismans. You see, and so you see right there. The, you know, you can see uh, Muslims in West Africa rocking uh, bracelets of various colors. You know how people are very colorful. They wear the locks. They wear talis talisman with their saints on it. You see, the, you were not, these are Sufis. You know, and they, and they uh, you know, they still claim to be Muslim, but they, you know, still have their African tradition. They, they damn near all the way home. And so I'll be glad when they cut that the rest cut the rest of that Arab Islam off of the African and let it up go all the way. You know, because ain't nothing that you're looking at is Islamic. You know what I'm saying? So they need to quit calling on Muhammad and all this, that, and the third, and, and having any connection to the to pale Arab and go back to, to the original African tradition that they had. Got them in tens of thousands of years before it was an Arab ever known on the planet. We got to stop there. And so you see the beautiful talisman that, which, you know, we had even in, 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 in the Nile Valley. We had our talisman. We had our sacred uh, medallions that we wore. You know what I'm saying? So this is African tradition. You also the bright. Uh, colorful combinations of clothes. And you're not going to see that in Arab Islam. You're not going to see that with the with the pale Jew. You're not going to see that. You see these, any you know it's only one man can wear some socks like that. They got to be an African. You know what I'm saying? These, these Every color of the rainbow. You understand what I'm saying? And that man's socks. You understand? So you know he matching up top too. 
And so you can see right there, you know, the, the various uh, African uh, uh, clothing. You see what I'm very colorful. You see what I'm saying? And again, you see the towels, man. You could not even see, uh, you would think just, just the average African. You know what I'm saying? In culture and in mind until they open up their mouth and say some damn Mohammed or something. And so now we're going to deal with the whirling devils, excuse me, dervishes. You know, a lot of people, when they talk or think of Sufism, they think of some damn uh, turkey and, you know, and some whirling dervishes and shit where they over there spinning and they don't know what the hell they doing. You know, just spinning. You understand? They don't understand that our hair is the, you know, the things that come naturally to us, even in, a, you know, in our hair, you know what I'm saying? The thing that we've been understood, the power of the uh, the transcendental force of the universe, been understood it. And so when they got it, they didn't know, you know, they just spinning and spinning, you know, high off of some damn hayron or something, and don't you know, in 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 a in a, 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 a psychedelic shot of, of of being doped up. You see what I'm saying? And so you see here, we going back to the goat. You see what I'm saying? And so we got to separate the goats from the sh sheep. And so we see that the spiral, and, you, and when you're dealing with the, uh, the solar plexus, you know, all the way down to the root chakra, and you see that spirit moves in spiral. You see what I'm saying? It moves in spiral. And so, you know, you see that, you know, from the human being to the divine one is, is the spirit evolves in the spiral. And so everything in the universe, whether it's the tornado, whether it's the hurricane, whether it's, uh, you know, the turbine of a damn jet, it all moves in the, in the spiral, centripetal energy and force you see what i'm saying so why he why the 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 little uh dervish is just spinning the brother now he didn't broke it down on so many levels because not only is he doing the serpentine you know the core he also spinning at the same time he he's showing you how he you know what i'm saying so he really showing you and so we don't look at that you know that the brother didn't tapped in you know which he did he didn't tapped in when we was in our earlier stages of hip hop, we had tapped in into the serpentine consciousness. You see what I'm saying? We just we just didn't interpret it like that. You see what I'm saying? But that's what had happened. We had tapped in to the cosmic energy of the universe, and we were doing something that would mesmerize because that's how you know you didn't tap it. You mesmerize all things on the planet. Everybody wanted to do it. Everybody wanted to rap. Everybody wanted to do the graffiti. Everybody wanted to scratch. Even there on the turntable. You're dealing with centripetal energy. And so the family went to the turntable, Grandmaster Flash, and invented a whole nother damn art form. Well, you turn the turntable into a damn instrument. And so we weren't just spinning. We was tapping in now. Them, them, them whirling devils, excuse me, dervishes, was turning. They didn't understand this, this cosmic energy from the standpoint of the chose. You understand what I'm saying? Because when you talk about the Dogon, they ain't just dancing. They dancing out the constellations of the stars. You see what I'm saying? They dealing with that, that uh, 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 scientific mysticism. You see what I'm saying? They dancing out uh, uh, the, the serious constellation, serious A and serious B. And so, again, family, when we went back into a, and tapped into that cosmic force that, you know, we want, that we are the chose. And goddamn it, even in West Africa, you know, we didn't have to wait on them to become the, the we was the Sufis long before that, long before the, the world and uh, devils. You see what I'm saying? We were even in West Africa from hip hop. You see what I'm saying? From hip hop to West Africa, we already understood the serpent centripetal force. We also we already understood the mass, the uh the uh the the power of the spiral, and the uh, you know which is symbolic of the transformation of energy. You see what I'm saying? And so we got to get back 
into that. You see what I'm saying? We, you know, we got to get back and tap into the, the ancient African mysticism. You know, which we already knew through science. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that, you know, when you look, you know, uh, at the uh, the hurricane, this is a coil. This is serpentine. You know, just like the hair on our head. So just like you generate energy in a hurricane, you generating hair, energy in your crown. You see your woolly hair, which is the antenna connected to the cosmos, the the turbine, all science come from things that they saw in nature first. You understand what I'm saying? And they tried to duplicate it. You see what I'm saying? In what we call science. You see, it was only and even the uh, wind turbines that also generate energy. is moving in centrifugal force, family. The engine, the gears in the engine. Is moving in centrifugal force. And so once you understand, you have that energy sitting in your crown. You had the, the wool, the divine one. You got that energy. And when you align all your chakras, you open them up. When you purify your spirit and soul and you connect with the most high, the cosmo, and you, you charge up that sun that's inside of you, which they call the solar plexus that will give you unbending will and determination, then you will become what they call God-like. You understand what I'm saying? You will achieve what they call nirvana. Even when you look at, you know, the universe, that's us. That's us. We are the, we are the, manif the manifestation of solar energy right here on this planet. We are the sun made flesh, and that's why the sun produces the the holy liquid of melanin inside of us. And so when we say he anointed my head with oil, then it goes back into the Bible where it says, for God is a son. For God is a son and there's healing in his wings. And we will understand that much deeper as we do our studies. I want to thank you for your time and energy and support. Make sure you get on over there to kingsetty.com. GeneralSeti.com, my Patreon, General Sarasun Seti. And hey, this is not the end. This is just, you know, a pause for the cause. We'll be back with another powerful video real soon. Subscribe to all my YouTube channels, General Seti, uh, YouTube, Sarasun Seti, YouTube, King Seti, YouTube. Hit the uh the uh, notification bell so you know when I go live and get a video, a thumbs up, like it. Because you love it. Black power.